Welcome back students. In the previous lectures, we have seen how to solve an abstract problem and a job sequencing problem using greedy method. In today's class, we will try to solve a Huffman code problem using greedy method. In previous, week, previous two lectures, we have seen how to solve a knapsack problem and a job sequencing problem. In today's lecture, we will try to solve a Huffman code using our Grady method. Uh, the primary application of a Huffman is a prefix code that is primarily used uh, for lossless compression, it's used for lossless compression of data. Uh, the output of uh, this Huffman code, once we run the algorithm, the output of this, uh, uh, of this algorithm will be a variable length code. The output of the algorithm will be a variable length code. Let's first try to, uh, the normal conventions of uh, uh, storing these files is uh, by using uh, ASCII values of these files. Uh, these are these are uh, 8 bit values. Say for example, if you have a capital A, the ASCII representation of a capital A is a 65 decimal. And if I take the binary of this, it will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 1. This is a binary representation of the capital A. So essentially, what I'm uh, what I'm uh, doing over here in using these ASCII codes that I'm making use of eight bits to represent a single character. So if there's a message of ten characters, then essentially I'll be using somewhere around eighty bits. Uh, this is uh, too much of an uh, uh, too much of an information or too too much use of bits. Uh, if I could somehow reduce the number of bits that are being used, if I could somehow bring this down, if I somehow could optimize without um, uh, without losing any data, without losing any information, then that essentially will be a compression which is lossless. That will be a lossless compression. Uh, let's take an example and see how we can do it. Uh, we'll take an uh, arbitrary example, arbitrary example to understand. Uh, the lossless compression, then we will apply the Huffman code and see the optimization or the minimization uh, of these number of bits that are being used using Huffman code. Let us assume uh, these are different characters uh, that are there in my text or in my message. So, I am using characters character A, character B, character C, character D, character E and character F. Uh, what we just saw is that the ASCII basically makes use of uh, Five eight bits uh, to represent uh, these characters. Let's take an assumption, or let's take an example, wherein I'll be only representing these uh, by three bits. So if I say uh, zero zero and zero to represent my A, and zero 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 one to represent my B, zero one zero for C. Likewise, I'm making use of actually three bits and one zero one. So, these are the binary codes that I am using for these C. These are different characters that are there in my message. So, these are, these are the different characters uh, and the, what I mean by frequency is that how many times each of these characters appear in the message. Say for example, let us take an example that my message is A C F A B D E A E B. Take an assumption, this is an example. Now, in my example, if I see the frequency, so my A uh, has three occurrences, occurrence number one, occurrence number two, occurrence number three. My B has two occurrences, my E has two occurrences. So, this is what I meant by frequency. So, if I, if I have to uh, figure out the frequency of this, so A has a frequency of three, E has a frequency of two, likewise A has a frequency of five, that essentially means that in the message, in the text, A appears five times. B has a frequency of nine, C has a frequency of twelve, uh, D has a frequency of thirteen, E has a frequency of 16 and F has a frequency of 45. These values mean actually nothing. This, this, they're, they're not hard code values. You can substitute any values in these places. And they are just that uh, uh, how many times uh, does an A or a B or a C or a D figure in my text. So, this is a frequency. Now, let us 
compute the number of bits that I need to represent this message, total bits that I need. So if A has a frequency of 5, that tells me that A actually has 5 occurrences in the text and every single occurrence uh, requires 3 bits uh, for its representation. So we will have, uh, will be having a total of 15 bits to represent A. Let me say it again. A occurs 5 times in the text, in the message that needs to be compressed. And every occurrence, every single occurrence of this A uh, requires 3 bits for the representation. So 5 times 3 bits each time is what I mean by this 15 bits. Likewise, for B, 9 occurrences of B, 3 bits for each occurrence gives me a total of 27 bits for B. Uh, 36 in this case. In this case, it is 13 and 3, that is 39. In this case, 16 and 3, that is a 48. And 45 into 3, that is 135. So, total, I will be regarding 300 bits. So, if I have to uh, transmit this message, or if I have to send this message using this particular code, 3 bit code, I will be requiring 300 bits. Let us do the same example. Let us try the same example using Huffman coding and see how Huffman coding can basically optimize or reduce uh, the number of bits that are required in this case. Uh, before we take the example, uh, you may want to write down these uh, frequencies because I will be using the same example in Huffman coding. Let us try to figure out the different steps involved in the Huffman algorithm. Two major parts. One is that you have to build a Huffman tree. This tree will be building basically using our input characters. The input that we will be getting, that we will be having, that input I will be using to create this tree. Second, I will have to traverse this tree, traverse this Huffman tree and assign codes to characters. So this is how the Huffman uh, algorithm, Huffman code will be working for us first in two major steps. One step will be that we will be building the tree and the second step in this case will be that we will be traversing through that tree and those traversal values when I traverse, those traversal values will be used to represent different characters. Uh, the algorithm for building this tree uh, is uh, is a three four step algorithm. One for every single character, for every single leaf node, say I had uh, an A, B, C, D, and F, for every single character, unique character, we will be using one leaf node for it. So, uh, step one will be creating a leaf node for every single character for each unique character. And also, we will be creating a minimum heap. Why do I need this heap? I uh, will explain it during the example. Second, out of these uh, leaf nodes, uh, whatever the number of leaf nodes I have, I will be extracting two smallest possible. Extract two nodes with minimum frequency. things will be much more uh, easier to understand once we take the example for the same. Third, we will create a, create a new internal node uh, and the sum of and the value or weight of that will be equal to sum of two nodes frequency. So, in step 3, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to create a new internal node, not a leaf node, but an internal node and the weight of that internal node or the frequency of that internal node will be the sum of the two that we have already extracted and uh, we will be repeating, repeating step 2 and 3 
until heap contains only one node. That is where we stop, this will be our root node. Let us let me take you through this algorithm again. So, what we are doing that in this, this is a four step algorithm, in this four step algorithm every single instance of the character, every character that we have will be uh, represented by a single node, a leaf node, uh, it is more of a binary tree. So, every uh, single character here will be represented by a bin uh, leaf node, uh, out of these uh, we will be creating a heap out of this. The heap will basically keep tra track of every single node that we have there and the associated frequency of that node. Now, out of this heap, I will be extracting two nodes. Those nodes, the criterion for the extraction will be here, uh, the frequency, the minimum possible frequency, the two nodes with the least frequencies, uh, those are the two nodes that I will be extracting. Based on these two extracted nodes, I will be creating a new node. And the weight or the frequency of this new node. Uh, will be the sum of those two that have been already or previously extracted. I will repeat uh, this exercise, I will repeat this process of step 2 and step 3 till uh, I am left with the single node in my heap and that last node will be the root node. Uh, Let us try the same example that we tried earlier uh, and try to solve it this time using Huffman code. Remember uh, in the previous example we were uh, in the previous example we were in need of 300 bits, 300 bits were required. Let us try to see, uh, let us try that uh, using Huffman code and see if we can reduce this number of bits. So, let me, let this be my heap, A had 5 occurrences, my B had 9 occurrences, my C had 12 occurrences, D had 13, E had 16 and f 45. This was the example that we used and on this in the same example using 3 bit code we were in need of 300 bits. So, let us say this is my heap, this is the heap that I have created. Out of this heap I am supposed to uh, represent every single of these using a single node, using a single ne uh, leaf node. The algorithm tells me that I have to extract two uh, such leaf nodes with the minimum possible weight. Now, if we see the minimum possible weight here is for A is 5 and B is 9. So, these are the two nodes with least frequency. So, let us use these two nodes. So, I have an A, let us write the frequency to make it readable and my another node is B. The frequency of B is 9 in this case. That is step 2. Step 3 tells me that I will be creating a new internal node based on these two nodes. The frequency of that internal node now will be the sum of these two nodes. So, the new node that I create, let us call that x 1 and the weight that it will be carrying frequency is the sum of these two. So, that is a 9 and a 5 that is essentially 14. So, this is a new node that I create. Since these two nodes have already been addressed, a new node has been created. So, I will be adding the new node in the heap. So, x 1 has been created with a value of 14 and these two I do not require now because they have already been addressed. Let us have a look at the heap again and using step 2 I will be extracting two nodes with the least possible value. Now, the least possible value here is uh, 12 for a C, 13 for a D, 14 for the new, you will be, uh, will be including this as well, uh, 16 for a E and 45. So, obviously, you have 12 and we have a 13. So, these are the two nodes that I will be selecting. So, I have a C with a value of 12 and I have a D with a value of 13. That is my step 2. Step 3 tells me to create an internal node uh, using these two nodes with the value equal to sum of these two. So, that is uh, let us call the new node as x 2 and the weight on that will be 25 in this case. So, we have created a new node and let us put that in the heap x 2 with a weight of 25, these two we have addressed already. We are still not left with a single node, we will stop once we are left with one single node in this heap. So, we will repeat step 2 and step 3. Again I have to check for the nodes. Now, in this case my least two weights are E and the newly created internal node 14. 
So I'll be using this 14 and the 16 to create my new node. So this is my 14 and this is my E. He has a value of 16. So using these two, the least two possible, 14 and the 16. And remember, on the right hand side, the larger one, larger uh, frequency will go on the right, and the smaller frequency will go on the left hand side. So I'm creating a new node over here using 16 and the new uh, new internal node, and let's call this node as X3. The weight of X3 will be 30 in this case. Let's add X3 to our heap and we are done with these two. So, we are left with three nodes. We have an F of 45, we have X2 with weight of uh, frequency of 25 and X3 with frequency of 30. So, these are the two nodes, these are the smallest possible uh, least frequency two nodes. Let us create a new node out of these and let us call that X4. And the frequency of that is 30 and 25 will be 55. So, we have addressed these two internally new nodes, but we have created one more node that is X4 with a value of 55. Okay, now, we, have, we are left with the F with the weight of 45 and X4 with the 55. So, let us take that F with the weight of 45 and based on these, we will create a new node. Let us call that X5 and the weight will be 100. We have addressed this, we have addressed this, we have created a new node that is x5 with the weight 100. This is where we took, take our algorithm into the step 4 and step 4 tells us that if there is only a single node left, that single node is your root node which is this one. So, this is my root node. That is the first part of the Huffman code algorithm that I have to build a tree. How did I build this tree? Is that I am using these characters as a leaf nodes, now we can check it out. So, my A is a leaf node, my B is a leaf node, my C is a leaf node, my D is a leaf node and my E is a leaf node. Also, my F is a leaf node. Uh, the intermediary nodes that I created, they are all internal nodes. So, this is the first part of the algorithm. Second part of the algorithm is that I have to traverse this tree, the tree that I just created. Let's traverse this. When I say I have to traverse this tree, what I mean is that I have to try uh, reach every single node from the root node. Now, there is a rule that I need to follow in this case. The rule is that if the traversal is on the left hand side, assign a 0 and if the traversal is on the right hand side, assign a 1. It is very simple. So, if I traverse from root node, if I start the traversal towards left hand side, I will be assigning on this path, on this traversal a value of 0 and if the traversal is on the right hand side, then I will be assigning a value of 1. So, let us do it. F is on the left hand side, so I will assign the value of 0. Uh, X4 on the right hand side, a 1. X3 is on the right hand side, so 1, right hand side of X of 4. But X of 2 is on the left hand side of this, so a value of 0. C is on the left hand side of X2, so a value of 0. And D is on the right hand side, so a value of 1. Likewise here, for E, it is a 1. For X1, it is a 0. For B, it is a 1. And for A, it is a 0. So, that was the second part of the algorithm. Now, using this traversal values, using these values that I have assigned during my traversal, these are the new codes, these are the new variable length codes that I will be using to uh, refer my characters. Now, let us see, uh, those characters are, let us put it here. I have an A, B, a C, a D, an E and F, these are the characters that I have. Okay, let us see A. If I have to reach to A, what is the path? The path is 1, 1, 0, 0. So, that is the new code that I assigned to it. 1, 1, 0, 0. Check it again. To reach A from root node, I have to take this path. So, this is the path. 1, 1, 0, 0. So, this is the path that I am taking. And that is the code that I assigned to A. Likewise, for my B here, it is a 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Check it again. 1 to x4, then 1 to x3, then 0 to x1, then 1 here. That is 1, 1, 0, 1. Check it for C. 
जिसमें सी वन जीरो जीरो वन जीरो जीरो इट इज थ्री बीट कोड सो सी दैट्स वाई आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड द वेरी बिगनिंग ऑफ द लेक्चर दीज आर वेरिएबल लेंथ कोर्स अनलाइक द फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल दैट इज डूक आई आई यूज दो फिक्सड वैल्यूज ऑफ थ्री बिट्स और इनके सब आस के एड्रेस ऑफ फाइव एट बिट वैल्यू और इनके सब बाइनरी रिप्रेजेंटेशन इट मे बी अ फाइव बिट वैल्यू बट इन दिस केस हाफ मैन कोड दीज आर वेरिएबल लेंथ कोड्स फॉर माई डी हेज माई डी इज द वन जीरो वन वन जीरो वन फॉर माई ई दिज माई ई इज द वन वन एंड वन 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 एंड वन एंड फॉर माई एफ इज अ सिंगल करेक्टर दैट इज जीरो is a single path let's go back to the earlier example and see check out the frequency of these what is the frequency of each of these characters so this is the code again and this is the character the frequency of each of these was a had a frequency of 5 b had a frequency of 9 c had a frequency of 12 d had a frequency of 13 e had a frequency of 16 and 45 Let's compute total bits. Now in the earlier example, I was uh, using three bits to represent eight, and there were total five occurrences of a. So I had fifteen bits. But in this case, I'm making use of four bits to represent a. So five frequencies, five occurrences. So five into four is twenty bits. I'll be needing, I'll be in need of twenty bits to represent my a in this case. Similarly for my b, four bits. And nine such occurrences. So every single occurrence will be requiring four bits. So for a total of nine occurrences, I'll be requiring thirty-six bits. In this case, in the case of C, I'll be using three bits to represent C, and C has twelve occurrences in the text. So total of twelve into three, that's thirty-six. For D, three bits to represent a D, thirteen occurrences. So that makes a total of thirty-nine. For E. E has 16 occurrences in the text. Text. Every single occurrence is uh, represented by three bits, so a total of 48 bits for E. And for F, which is the highest number of occurrences, I'll be using only a single bit. That means 45 bits. If I take the total sum of these, it sums up to 224 bits. Now remember, compare this value with the earlier computer value of 300 bits for fixed size three-bit values. We have a optimization of at least 76 bits. We are we are able to save 76 bits, and we did not compromise with the number of characters. So it's a lossless compression uh, optimization by at least 76 bits in this particular exam. example uh, using hapman code why the greedy the greedy part here is lies in this case that the one with the least frequencies uh, with the highest frequencies the one character that has the highest number of frequencies will be giving it least number of bits to represent so if i see it the other way around the one with the highest number of frequencies requires least bits and the one with the least number of frequencies requires highest number of bits that's how the greedy approach works in this case This is how Huffman code uh, can be used for lossless compression, and this is how to do uh, how to uh, execute a Huffman code using greedy method. In the next uh, lecture, that will be the last lecture for this greedy method uh, technique. We'll be uh, looking at an example or a problem of uh, optimal storage on tapes. How do we store our information or data uh, on tapes? such that the retrieval ratio the re, uh, retrieval value of these programs is minimum using greedy method till then take care